Hey everybody, so here we're doing another math lesson. So you're going to need your math notebook, a pencil, and um, a whiteboard or a piece of paper so that you can get some practice in, okay? Um, we're going to use the standard algorithm um, to multiply decimals once again, but this time we're applying it to a different, um, a different type of problem, okay? One where we have to do multiple steps in order to answer questions. Okay, but before we do, let's go ahead and review. Let's go ahead and find the product of four and five tenths times 12 thousandths. Go ahead and do this on your whiteboard or a piece of paper. Pause the video. Okay, so hopefully you ended up with 500 40 ten thousands, also known as 54 thousands. Again, here we have one, two, three, four numbers total behind the decimal point in our problem. And so we'll have four numbers, one, two, three, four behind the decimal point in our answer. Now remember, that's the same as multiplying by a thousand and multiplying by, a ten, by ten, dividing by a thousand, dividing by ten. So our goal again for today is to find the products of decimals using the standard algorithm. And more specifically, we're going to work on multi-step problems, multi-step problems. So your, your notebook should look like this. Multi-step problems involving decimal multiplication. So this is what you should have on your note page when you're looking at that, okay? So here's our first problem. Mark bought four packs of pencils, three erasers, and one notebook. Here we have a list of the cost of one pack of pencils. So this is the cost for one pack of pencils. This is the cost for one notebook and the cost for one eraser. Much must, must be a really cool eraser for $1.48. Okay. So this is the scenario we're working with. He gave the clerk a $20 bill. How much change should he receive? Sounds like we're going to have to do a lot of work here. So what do you think we'll have to do first? Here, I am given four packs of pencils, three erasers, and one notebook. But the cost they gave me was only for one of each of those items. So what do you think we're going to need to do? I want you to think about it and say it aloud. It's okay if you're being goofy. Well, let's figure out the cost of how much he spent on pencils. This is the first thing we're gonna do. We're gonna figure out how much total he spent for four packs of pencils, how much total for three erasers, and for the one notebook. So how much did he spend on pencils? Well, this is how much for one, we have four packs of pencils. So that means I'm going to have four groups of that amount. So two and 78 hundredths times four. Let's go ahead and do that math. Four times eight is 32, 32. Four times seven is 28, plus three is 31. Four times two is eight, plus three is 11. How many numbers should be behind the decimal point? You got it, two numbers. So this is how much he spent total on pencils. Total on pencils. Let's move on to look at how much he spent on erasers. So this is how much he spent on erasers. Up here it says he bought three erasers. So that's going to be three groups of that amount. So as a problem, that's going to be one and 48 hundredths times three. Let's go ahead and do that math. Three times eight is 24. Three times four is 12 plus two is 14, 14, three times one is three, plus that one is four. How many numbers should be behind my decimal point? You got it, we should have two numbers behind my decimal point. 
four dollars and 44 cents or four and 44 hundredths is how much he spent for the three erasers okay last one we're going to work on how much did he spend on the notebook well it says one notebook so i'm going to have one group of this i already know one times anything is just going to give me that number so i'm going to just go ahead and write three dollars and 79 cents or three and 79 hundredths okay so we did all this work now what do we do with it are these my answers do i have three separate answers no here's the question that went with this problem he gave the clerk a 20 dollar bill how much change should he receive well you could go about doing this in a couple of different ways the first way that i'm going to have you copy into your notebook is to add all three of those values together eleven dollars and twelve cents four dollars and forty four cents three dollars and seventy nine cents so let's go ahead and add two plus four is six plus nine is fifteen one plus one is two plus four is six plus seven is thirteen one plus one is two plus four is six plus three is nine and one plus nothing is one okay so again is this how much change he's going to receive no that'd be cool if he got that much money back but that's not happening he gave the clerk twenty dollars this is how much all of his items cost so now we're going to take that and subtract in order for us to subtract again we line up that decimal point make sure each digit has a number above it that way when we subtract it's a lot easier always start with the biggest value when you subtract we're going to have to borrow since we have all these zeros that two became a one that zero becomes a 10 but we're going to borrow again which becomes a nine gave to this one regrouping or borrowing same thing we're going to regroup that 10 into a nine and give 10 here. So 10 minus five is five, nine minus three is six, nine minus nine is zero, one minus one is zero. Bring down that decimal point, we have 65 cents. Mark should receive 65 cents in change. What kind of coins could he get back? Well, let's see, he could get back two quarters and, a, and three nickels. He could get two quarters, two dimes and a nickel, or excuse me, two quarters, one dime and a nickel. He could get six dimes and five pennies, right? Lots of variations there. Now, is this the only way that we could have done this? No, we could have taken 20 and then subtracted 11 12 taken that difference and subtracted 444 taken that difference and subtracted 379 okay so there's a couple of different ways that we could have done this but we definitely had to do this work earlier burp, 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 where we found the amounts for each um each item the total amounts for each item okay so now that we've done it you've seen one way and we've talked about another way to do this I would like for you to try this problem on a whiteboard or on a piece of paper okay Noel bought three packs of pencils one eraser and two notebooks here are the prices which are the same prices as the last problem by the way he gave the clerk a $20 bill. How much change should he receive? Go ahead and pause the video so that you that way you can work this out. Okay, so let's see. This is how much he spent on a pack of pencils. We had three groups of that, which was $8.34. This is how much he spent on the two notebooks, $7.58. And this time he bought one eraser, which gave us $1.48. If you added those all up, you'd get $17.40. If then you took that number and subtracted it from 20, you would get $2.60.
that's how much change he would receive. If you ended up, instead of adding all these up, if you subtracted each one of those, then you would still get the same answer. Please check your work with what I have up here. Remember, we learn from our mistakes. Okay, whose box holds more popcorn? Here's Amanda's popcorn container. Mmm, popcorn sounds yummy. Here's Mary's popcorn container. Mmm, okay. So, whose holds more popcorn? Well, how much something holds? Hmm, what will we need to do to answer this question? What are we looking for for each of these containers? I want to know how much it holds. Hmm, what are we looking for? Say it out loud. We're looking for volume that's right now let's see if you can say this part out loud what is the formula for volume length times width times height very good so we're going to be multiplying boop 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 all three of these numbers boop 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 separately of course and then comparing which one has the most um the biggest volume to see which one would hold the most popcorn so let's go ahead and start. So it doesn't matter which numbers we multiply as long as we multiply all three of these numbers. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply 13 and 5 tenths times 9 and 5 tenths. Please copy this into your notes page. 5 times 5 gives me 25. 5 times 3 is 15 plus that 2 is 17 the one and the seven. Five times one is five plus one is six. Let's go ahead and put that placeholder zero. Let's cross it off so we know that it's the place holding zero. We're crossing these off so we don't accidentally add them later. Okay, and let's do this. Nine times five is 45. Nine times three is 27 plus four is 31. Whoops. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 3 is 12. Add those down. 5 plus 0 is 5. 7 plus 5 is 12. 1 plus 6 is 7. Plus 1 is 8. 2 plus nothing is 2. 1 plus nothing is 1. How many numbers did we have behind the place value, behind the decimal point? We had two numbers. So my answer here is 128 and 25 hundredths centimeters squared so far but I've only multiplied two of the three numbers I now need to take this number and multiply by that third number Ooh, I love tens what is the trick when I multiply by ten we just move the decimal place one place value over it gets one place value bigger so I have 1,282 and 5 tenths centimeters cubed. I need to write that before I forget. Centimeters cubed. Always label, guys. All right. So we're going to do the same thing in this one, and then we get to compare them. So I'm choosing to multiply 20 and 5 tenths times eight and five tenths. So I'm going to multiply these two numbers. Then what I get for my answer, I'm going to multiply by the third number. So here we go, five times five gives me 25. Five times zero is zero, plus two is two. Five times two is 10. Let's put our placeholder zero, cross it out so you know that it's the placeholder zero, cross this two out so you don't accidentally add it later. 8 times 5 is 40, 8 times 0 is 0, plus 4 is 4, and 8 times 2 gives us 16. Let's go ahead and add those down. 5 plus 0 is 5, 2 plus 0 is 2, 0 plus 4 is 4, 1 plus 6 is 7, and 1 plus nothing is 1. Here we have 1 and 2 numbers, 1, 2 behind the decimal point. Are we done? No, no, Mrs. Clash. We have to... Okay, so we then we need to multiply by this third number. By this third number, 174 and 25 hundredths times eight. Eight times five gives me 40. 
2 times 8 gives me 16, plus 4 gives me 20. 8 times 4 is 32, plus 2 is 34. 8 times 7 is 56, plus 3 is 59. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 5 is 13. We have one, two numbers total in our problem behind the decimal point, so we're going to have one, two numbers total behind our decimal point in our answer. Uh oh, oops, gave it away there. Uh oh, which box holds more popcorn? Would it be Amanda's popcorn container or Mary's popcorn container? Well, the answer here is Mary's popcorn container. Mary's box can hold more popcorn. That's the true answer to this question because this number is greater than this. Let's start at the biggest place value. So we have a thousand here, a thousand here. So that doesn't help us. Then we go to the hundreds place value. We have two and we have three. That three tells me this is the bigger container. Okay, lots of steps I know. I'm going to go ahead and write what we multiplied here in this problem. So here we multiplied, let's change that. Burp, burp, burp. We multiply 13 and 5 tenths times 9 and 5 tenths times 10. And in this problem, we multiplied 20 and 5 tenths times 8 and 5 tenths times 8. Okay, so we did... Um, our use our volume formula. We multiplied the two numbers first, found that answer, and then multiplied by the third number so that we could compare. I know it's a lot of steps, but this is stuff you guys know how to do. You know how to multiply decimals. You know how to um, find the volume of rectangular prisms, and you also know how to compare decimals. So three things that we're doing here, combining them that you've already learned how to do. Okay, here's a very similar problem. This time we have Jeff's popcorn container and George's popcorn container. Whose box holds more popcorn? Go ahead and pause the video so that way you can um, check your work or so that you have time to do your work. Okay, so ooh, lots of work here. So we multiplied on this one 19 and 5 tenths times 10 and 5 tenths and got. Um, 204 and 75 hundredths. Then we took that and multiplied by the third number, getting 2047 and 5 tenths centimeters cubed. This one we multiplied 30 and 5 tenths centimeters times 8 and 5 tenths centimeters and got 259 and 25 hundredths. That number then multiplied by the third, which gave us 2074 centimeters cubed. This one, we couldn't look at the thousands, we couldn't look at the hundreds, we instead had to look at the tens to tell us which one was greater, and George's popcorn box held more popcorn, okay? So George's box holds more popcorn is the answer to our question. Okay, so what is the rule when we multiply decimals? When we multiply decimals, what? When we multiply decimals, however many numbers are behind the decimal in my problem, that's how many numbers are behind the decimal in my answer, okay? I'd like for you, last problem that we're going to work on together, okay, find the product of two and three tenths times one tenth times two hundredths. Pause the video so you have time to work it out. Okay, so two and three tenths times one tenth will give you 23 hundredths. 23 hundredths times two hundredths gives you 46 ten thousandths. 46 ten thousandths. All right, guys, you've been great. Thank you for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you have any questions, please make sure to ask your teacher.